Alrighty, welcome back. So the goal of this video is going to be to add our image assets that we have in Figma into our own project. There is a principle of layout and design when it comes to print for newspapers and magazines, and that is that you always want the image to be larger than what it will be on the page in order to make sure that it remains sharp. If you've ever had a really small image that has been made bigger, you can see that it pixelates and loses quality. We want the opposite to happen in this case, to have a bigger image become smaller on the page. So we need to export the elements. We can do this in different formats. So let's say that we click on one of the layers here. So if we were to click down on the arrow, we can see that it's made up of an icon as well as the text here. If you wanted to, you could actually export each of these layers individually and apply the styling individually. But for me, that's a little too in-depth. I wanna just actually export the entire layer, so the logo plus the branding itself. Once I have this layer selected, we're gonna start with the branding. I'm gonna go over to the export option here. I'm gonna click on it. And you can see that there's multiple formats that you could export in. For me, I'm going to stick with PNG because it allows us to maintain quality by exporting at a bigger size, as well as maintaining transparency, which is especially important for these images that have box shadow with them as well. So we're going to switch this to two times. You can see if you want to preview it, you can see that the checkered background is showing that the background is transparent which is also gonna be super important because we are gonna be changing the background color later on in the project. So we just click on this button, export, and you can see we have our PNG here. We're gonna do the same thing for our main image, but once we click on this, we can see that there's actually a whole other image here. So we have the iPhone that's made up of the swipe indicator, the screen, the device, and the frame. You can see that as I hover over it, the blue changes to show which one is selected. In this case, we're gonna just take the iPhone itself, which has everything together, including the box shadow. So we'll now click and export that. You can see we have a preview here, we have the box shadow, and the rest of it is transparent. And again, I'm gonna export it at two times. Export that, and we can minimize that. I'm gonna do the same thing for the rest of these, so each of these images. So we have exported each of our image assets here. Now we're going to jump into where we've downloaded them. So we're gonna show them in our folder here. And we're gonna copy all of these into our splash page project inside a folder we're gonna create called IMG. And we'll put this here, open it up, and we're gonna drag all of these inside. So there should be two, four, six, eight, nine images total. Gonna drag them and we're gonna clean these up. Okay, let's just view them like this. So we'll switch that. Okay, so I am gonna change all of the file names to be more simplified in order to remove the spaces and just be easier within our project. So again, I will kind of fast forward through this. Okay, so for all the one word file names, I just made them lowercase just to match everything. The iPhone 15 image, I renamed to be main-image. I added the dashes to habitual branding, made it lowercase. And then I simplified these two to be app-store-button and google-play-button. All right, so we have all of our images sorted out. They're now in our project. It's time to actually add them to our code into our index.html. And we're gonna start with the branding which is actually gonna go above our title and text as it is on the page. So first, we're gonna comment out a title for our brand logo. And I'm just gonna add this as a straight up image. So I'm just gonna type IMG and press enter. And the source, I'm gonna do dot slash, and then it'll automatically come up with image. I'm gonna press enter. And now you can see that it automatically shows all the possible options here and I actually want habitual branding, so I'm gonna highlight that and press enter. And I'm gonna give it an alt 
description as well, habitual logo, and I'm also going to give it a class of brand-img. All right, next, within our text container, we want to add our app icons below this. Okay, I'm going to create a parent div just with period app-store-btn and press enter and you see it creates the div for me. Inside of this, I'm going to have an anchor element, so I'll just type A and press enter. This would link to the App Store for the Splash page that we have, but because we don't really have an app to link to, I'm just going to put in HTTPS colon slash slash and then apple.com. And we're also going to give this a target attribute of underscore blank so that it opens in a new page. And then we're going to press enter here again. And then inside of this anchor is going to be our image. So I'm going to have my image here and the source. I'm going to do dot slash again into our image folder. And then I want the app store button PNG. And then the alt, I'm just going to have app store and I can actually copy this now and we'll paste it again. And this time I'm going to change this class of the parent here to be Google dash play dash BTN. And the link is going to go to play dot Google dot com instead. And we still want our target blank. We need to change the source. So this time it's going to be our Google play button dot PNG. And I'm going to change the alt attribute as well to be Google Play. Okay, so we can save that and check that out so far. Okay, so we have our branding here and we have our App Store icon. And if we click on it, you can see that we go to the Apple website. And if we click on this, we see that we go to Google Play. All right, so that's working how we want it to work so far. You can see that they're also way too big, especially compared to the text, but we will get to that in the next video when we focus on our styling. Let's keep adding our assets though for now. So next we have our main image. So we want this to be below our text container. So we'll go below that and we're going to comment out a title for our main image. And we're going to use a parent div for this as well. So we'll just do dot main dash image dash container and then press enter to create our div. And then inside of this, we're going to have our image and then IMG press enter to create our image and our source dot slash and then enter for our image. And we want our main image dot PNG and the alt will be our landing page mockup. Okay. And then below that we'll comment out another title and this is just going to be for images. And then we're going to just add in the rest of the images. I'm going to fast forward through this part. You can see that each of these will also have their own unique class. So this first one is profile dash image. It'll follow that same format for the rest of them. I can actually copy these. So I have five in total and now I'll fast forward through renaming them. Okay. So we're done here. We have a class corresponding to each. We have the correct, images in here, and we have an alt description for all of our images. Let's save that now and check it out. Okay, so we have our main image here. It's definitely too big. And we have all of our other images here. They are also definitely bigger than they need to be. Okay, so in the next video, we will get to actually styling everything to make everything fit and position the way that it should be. I'll see you in that one. Bye for now.